Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic arm inspection today is Dockin's Breaking the Chains. So it's 40 years old today, but this is the US remix version from, it's really September 18, 983. So let's just talk about the history of this a little bit. So I'm celebrating it 40 years old today, but the original version was released in Europe in 981. And it's quite a convoluted tale, um, which I'd uh, you kind of recommend you go online to um, uh, look into. But basically, Don Dokken had been over in Germany. He'd had another lineup of Dokken, or he was just solo Don Dokken. Uh, and he uh, managed to get a deal with Career Records. They'd made he made three demos. Uh, Career Records, you'll know, a French label, and they're most famous for putting out Saxon uh, and being Saxons. Um, label uh, pretty pretty successful in the early 80s um so the original sleeve had a kind of purple Dockland logo um a picture of don on the back and that was always the confusion really and this was something that would cause consternation with george lynch i think is it kind of seemed like a solo album there is a french pressing with a different cover i think or maybe it's a german pressing and it has don on the front in change with his sunglasses on which is kind of the uh, photo the painted over shot on the back of the career pressing. I used to have the career pressing. I'm actually sold it for some decent money. Um, but um, yeah, so basically he got off of the deal. Um, uh, he got George in. Mick Brown was on drums. I think Peter Boltz plays bass on it. Um, uh, and they went over and cut the records, the three tracks they did demos of. Um, which I'm not sure if I can find that out, but you will be able to find that online. They just kind of mixed those, kept them as were, and recorded the other seven tracks to save money. And I think I think Don was able to pay each band member like two thousand dollars, which in today's money is about I don't know five, six, seven thousand dollars. I don't know if you did inflation calculator, so not great money, but you know probably better money than the band were earning at the time. I think what's interesting about this is you've got to remember Don Dockham by the time his album comes out is twenty eight. Now, most people have crashed and burned by them, or if you take an example of Van Halen, by the time Eddie Van Halen was 28, he was writing and recording the 1984 album. So Dong's really been in the, the trenches in the LA scene. The same for George. George is 27 by this point, and he will actually audition ne the next year for Ozzy's band. I think he might have auditioned previously before that when they got um, Randy. Um, and he actually went back to Dock and, and he kind of did three weeks of Ozzy, which, but it didn't work out. Yeah, it's a tricky one with George. What would he sound like in Aussie? I'm not sure, um, you know, if, if that would totally work. And Aussie obviously fought that. Um, so, that, yeah, there's this weird thing. I remember this being reviewed in Kerrang, the 1981 edition. Uh, there was always on the, the, the kind of radar to maybe try and get it, but it just kind of came and went. And very good reviews. When you listen to the original, it's very raw production with a lot of reverb on the um, vocals. The guitar sounds quite cool. I kind of prefer the rim guitar sound on it. Um, uh, but basically what happened was they managed to get a US deal. They signed with Electra Records and the decision was made to remix the Breaking the Chains on, but also do a bit of tinkering with tracks and shoot a video for Breaking the Chains. So the running order of the original Breaking the Chains is Breaking the Chains, Seven Funders, I Can't See You, In the Middle, We're Illegal, which later became Live to Rock, Rock to Live. Then there was Paris, which is the studio version, which later became the live version of Paris is Burning, although I suspect it maybe it was recorded in the studio and uh, crowd noise was added. Stick to your guns, young girl fell in in Knight Rider. So that was the original running order. The running order of the Alexa version is Breaking the Chains in the Middle, Felony, I Can't See You, Live to Rock, Brackets Rock to Live, Knight Rider, Seven Fun is Young Girl, Stick to Your Guns and Paris is Burning. I think that's a better running order, but then maybe that's because I'm used to it. So how does the production differ on this? It's kind of crisp, it's kind of thinned out, the guitar's a little more scratchy, the drum sounds bigger, there's less reverb on Don's vocals. Where they touch things up, they've added a lot of backing vocals, I think, on most tracks. Um, and then Live to Rock, Rock to Live is 3 minutes 39, so what they've done is remix the track and change the lyrics. Uh, I think it's better, uh, I think it's got a better hook. Um, uh, and then George Lynch, uh, will come to George, uh, cuts a different solo. Uh, and so on. So uh, breaking the chains as well. Uh, the um, verse riff is basically the, the intro riff on the uh, the career version. It just pedals E, and then comes in with the riff. Um, 
but it plays the kind of riff all the way through on the verse. Uh, and then Paris, Paris is burning. Uh, it's got a different solo one. I like the studio version. You know, the live version uh, obviously is different. It has a different solo, and it starts off with George Lynch's solo spot. It says here live in Berlin, December '82. But you don't know. There's probably a lot of touch-ups on it. Maybe they took the live version, and you know, I'm sure it's touched up. But anyway, um, uh, on the uh, 983 version, Juan Cruciate is in, uh, on voc on bass, uh, and he plays. I imagine he plays on some tracks. Maybe he redid some bass. But I'm not sure. It's probably Peter Boltz. Uh, later on, he would go on a rat. Uh, in the video for Breaking the Chains. Jeff Pilsen is in the video, so by the time this album comes out, they do the video, Jeff Pilsen's in, and obviously that's the classic Doc and lineup. Okay, let's just go through the tracks of sort of yin and yang there. Um, if you go on YouTube, you can find the original 81 mix. Opens with Breaking the Chains. I would say when an album doesn't do that well and the band gets a second chance, it's always because there's something on the album where people go, actually, that was pretty good. Uh, so I should say that this album didn't do very well, but Dokken got a second chance with Two For Now and the rest is history. Um, if not, they would have got tanked. But I think the track Breaking the Chains is a really good track. Um, it's got a great hook, it's got a great riff. This is a special place in my heart because this is the first riff where I learned to palm me properly. Uh, and then after learning this riff, I went for a period where instead of trying to lead, I just riffed for six months. And I think that put me in good stead, A, for riffing, but for writing as well. So I feel ever indebted to this this song. Uh, and my friend, I had a friend called Adrian, Adrian Brooks, he actually plays over in Tenerife. Uh, does a Bowie tribute uh, and a, a rock covers. Uh, and he showed me uh, Palm Muting from a Jake Lee article in um, Guitar for the Practicing Musician, Rock and Roll Rebel. And then from that we were able to spot, I think, the break into change, chug the E string. Uh, and yeah, the world of riffage opened up. So it's a great track, it's got a lovely George solo, melodic George solo, he kind of stretched out with some shredding more, um, but also this is probably the first guitar solo I learned properly, or thereabouts, so, and that was a big part of my development as a player, um, a cultivating string range of vibrato, uh, and obviously George Lynch is my all-time favourite player, and his vibrato is the gold standard for me. Okay, it's 3 minutes 43, the next track's 3 minutes 43 in the middle, I think this is a good track, Got quite a cool Lynch solo. He did some kind of flat five stuff. Barely, barely. Uses, uses that unique use of the blue scale. Uh, and he did some cool dive bombs and kind of whammy stuff. Um, so the solo on this and the solo on Blake and the Chains are exactly the same as George did in 81. Um, so at this point, George, you know, I've got to say his playing's really good, but he's not going to... I don't feel his playing's going to totally scare Randy and Eddie, although they had respect for him. Um, Randy Rhodes said that George Lynch was the play he feared more than Eddie. Uh, another interesting thing is aside is back in 1975, I think, check out Van Halen Rising book, uh, Harvey Mandel, maybe it was 76, but the album Shen Grenade, I think comes out 75. He starts doing 200 tapping on that. There's a story that Eddie Van Halen was heading down Sunset Strip to check out Harvey Mandel's gig, I think, at the Whiskey, and he bumped into George Lynch, and George Lynch was heading to that gig. So, you know, you say it's a small world, but guitar, the world of guitar is quite a small world, and players know each other and go at the same gigs. Um, if you go online, check out the Shen Grenade album, if you go about the 18-minute mark on the album, I think, could be 26, I'm not sure, you will hear Harvey Mandel do open string pull-off tapping. Uh, but it's quite kind of experimental, exploratory, it doesn't have, what's the word I'm looking for, much form. Uh, Eddie Van Halen would turn it more into something special. So George does little bits of tapping as well. Felony's next, this is quite a funny track again. This is exactly the same uh, as the, I think, as the uh, 981 version. It might have some extra back and forth. Uh, I quite like this track, the lyrics are hilarious, it's like Don basically has, you know, got off of a girl who's underage and he gets arrested, so, you know, it's not his fault, you know, it's felony's fault, you know, classic um, misogyny metal lyrics, you know, quite an interesting thing about hair metal is how, like, the lyrics often blame women, you know, um, you know, when, when the relationship splits up, it's always her fault. Anyway, that's a whole dissertation. 
Uh, but yeah, it's got a good groove. Um, you know, it's not a great track, but I think it's decent. Um, and then you've got I Can't See You. This is co with Juan Crucier. Um, this is one where they've put on a lot of backing vocals on the, the 83 remix. Uh, it's kind of pop, poppy sort of uh, power pop in a way. Uh, George kind of tracks in some clean guitars on this. And that's interesting. He does it on the original. And that's something George would do later on, tracking in clean parts in the lead. Um, Don sings kind of softer on this album but his vocals are nice, melodic um, I think this is a catchy little track and then we finish with Live to Rock Rock to Live, formerly, formerly We Are Illegal, this is Stimits in 39 um, this is a good rocker it really benefits from the different lyrics and George does a storming solo on it and he does one of these classic licks in it uh, which Demartini will copy for the in your tr You're In Trouble solo I think what's interesting about this is George obviously has cut this solo uh, whenever this album's been remixed, which I'm guessing they've probably done some in the spring or summer of 83 and the album's come out in September. And you can hear the improvement in his playing. Now he would scare Eddie Van Halen and Randy Moore and John Sykes and those other players who were doing some cool stuff in 81. You know, he was scaring them a bit in 81, but he wouldn't terrify them. But now he'd be like, shit, I'd better get practicing. And again, you've got to hand it to George. You know, by this point, again, he's 27. You know, that's old in guitar world, uh, older, you know, because people are normally making an impact. You know, Uli's made an impact when he's 20, Michael when he was 19, Michael Schenker, Eddie when he was 22, 23, you know. So, awesome. So, uh, cool. Uh, too much delay on the solos on this album. Um, uh, but anyway, that's the pattern of the time. And I think they're trying to mask the lack of quality in the recording. Next track is Night Rider. This is Doc and Lynch and Mick Brown. Doc, Don Doc and writes all the tracks other than um, the ones listed. I always like this track. Really cool riff. Da 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 da. And Molly criticism of the day's double kick drums go duka 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 duka. It's not got much energy, um, but I like George's solo, even though it's masked in a huge reverb. Um, but uh, I like the cheese of the lyrics, you know, it's kind of like driving down the freeway at night, Night Rider. Good. Then you've got Seven Funders, another track, which this was track two on the original album. Again, three minutes 55. Um, it's a little longer. Um, I do like this track. It's got a cool gothic riff, cool, cool solo where George kind of does a kind of randy, you know, kind of gothic minor type of solo. Um, it's good. Uh quite a soft seven funders you know that's the thing the vocal harmonies on this song are quite laid but it's kind of soft you know I think it shows that thing that Docker will do they'll bring in a lot of melodic aspects uh, but with a European sensibility but an LA sensibility and that's what's interesting about this album you know it kind of was an honorary new Wobbum album you know Y and T were kind of honorary new Wobbum band uh, in the early 80s in Britain Docker and wherever those who knew about them uh, and Anvil, except those kind of bands have that sound. But Dokken, you can argue that this is the first, I think Martin Popoff said, is this the first hair metal album? Um, because the argument is, you know, Too Fast for Love by Motley Crue is kind of more aggressive and heavy, heavier. Um, and this has got the softness, uh, the commerciality. Um, uh, you know, the, I'm talking about the 81 mix here, because, you know, obviously by 83 there's quite a lot of bands doing that stuff. Young Girls is next again, you know, cheesy lyric, Young Girls, you try driving me crazy. Again, I quite like this track. Uh, at the end, George puts some extra shredding on the end, just on the bound, yeah, end section. And again, you hear the improvement in his playing. Uh, you know, you hear the fast pentatonics, the wild of vibrato, and you hear the player that's going to make tooth and nail and stake his patch, you know, uh, in, in the pantheon of great 80s players. For me, he's part of what I call the Holy Six. Van Halen, Lynch, Satch, Fye, Malmsteen and Randy Rhodes. Uh, and I think those six players uh, are the most popular players and in influential players in the 80s and kind of Paul Gilbert, you know, and then some of the shredders coming in behind. Uh, there you go, Stick to Your Guns again, a track I kind of thought was a bit crap, but when I was listening to it, actually it's catchy, it's got a reclanked really bass on this. Again, more backing vocals added on this, but pretty much like the original um, nice harmony sort of uh, lead part by George at the start, which he will, you know, and a track like Prisoner later on, or you don't just don't lie to me, he will do that. Uh, and then it finished with Paris is Burning, so now it's retitled Paris is Burning. 
Um, this is a track John Dokken had going back to the late 70s. It was early forays into Germany. Um, so George puts a storming solar spot at the start of this. Whether it's actually been done live in Berlin in 1982 uh, or whether they've done it in the studio, I don't know. There's an album called From Conception Live 81 you can get by Dokken. Now, I don't think it's from 81. I think the recording is maybe 82, 83. Because um, I think Jeff Pilson's on it, so I think that, that's a bit con confused, but I uh, haven't listened to it for a while, but it's got a few tracks like Going Down Under, which never got um, put on an album. Worth checking out. Uh, but yeah, George does some great stuff where he's doing his kind of crazy, kind of diminished flat five stuff. He does that lovely arpeggio bit, which I still can't work out. Then he does his take on the classic Van Halen run where Van Halen plays groups of sixes up the B and high. Van Halen does that on Spanish Fly. Um, George will do this as well on the um, uh, Into the Fire solo. But what's interesting on this take on like Van Halen, he'll kind of mix in uh, notes from the Dorian mode, uh, Mixolydian to kind of make it easier. So it shifts mode as it goes up. It sounds really cool. Uh, and um, yeah, he'll do that repeating lick at the top. Um, it's really cool. His solo's great in the middle. There's some great licks. Um, it's a really good song. And again, I think this is the track that is strong. Um, it's the track, the opening and end of this album, show enough potential for the record label to go, okay, let's give them another chance. So that's Breaking the Chains, 1983, 40 years old today. Like I say, worth checking out. It's a solid, I've always liked the album actually, I always liked this kid. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, but go, go online, you will find um, people have uploaded the 1981 version. Uh, and it's interesting to compare and contrast. Um, but the, I think the remix, it does benefit from it, although it's not as raw. Uh, and like I say, there's enough in there for Dokken to thrive and survive for uh, some time. But a lot of what happened on the Breaking the Chains album, uh, the original one, I think, sows the seeds of Doc, uh, George Lynch and Don Dokken battling. Because Don Dokken will actually play rhythm guitar quite a lot in the early days of Dokken. And then George will say no to that does a Don's kind of just stuck with the front man thing and he was never a great front man he was probably better with a guitar behind him but also the Dokken name uh, you know uh, always made a lot of Don's band and he did get the deal originally but George um, you know ironically George would have his own band called Lynch Mob there you go okay thank you for checking this out remember share and subscribe um, if you're interested in other things head over to my Bot Brack channel it's in my uh, channel listings and that's films TV and other kind of music related things Thanks a lot and I'll see you again. Thank you.